Welcome to Modern Infrastructure Wednesday. My name is Aaron Cow. So we launched Plumy Deployments at the end of last year. Uh, Plumy Deployments is a deployments as a service technology where Plumy fully manages the execution of infrastructure as code programs for users of the platform. Um, I'm going to do a series that shows off some of the features of Plumy deployments. Today is part one where I'm going to show you how to enable OpenID Connect uh, to enable temporary credentials and granular access controls. So OpenID Connect or OIDC is an identity layer built on top of OAuth 2.0 framework. It allows third-party applications to verify the identity of end users and to obtain basic user profile information. OIDC uses JSON web tokens, which you can obtain using flows conforming to the OAuth 2.0 specifications. So with OIDC, it allows you to create temporary credentials and granular access controls, which is considered best practices for doing cloud infrastructure provisioning. So every time a deployment runs, um, a new temporary credential is generated. So there's no need to store sensitive credentials that are reused with every deployment. Um, you can also associate a OIDC token to a stack or organization. Um, with that, you can essentially implement least privilege access for all your stacks and scope down access to only what is needed. Okay, I'm gonna walk you through creating a new project, setting up Plumy deployments and enabling OIDC. Let's get started. Let's do that. Name this. We're gonna use um, something from the examples folder uh, that I have cloned into my GitHub. Um, it just deploys a simple uh, static website. Do that and go over settings. We're going to enable deploy. What we're going to do here is select the examples repo um, branch, and then we're going to use the code in the S3, AWS Poly S3 folder. Uh, now we're going to hit um, enable AWS integration, open ID connect here. And what it's going to ask for is a role ARN. So first things first, we're going to go to the AWS console to the identity and access management console. Um, first we have to create an identity provider, uh, because I'm using, um, a Plumy account. This is already created. So you create an identity provider. Um, you know, here, this is the, uh, provider use api.plumy.com slash OIDC. Um, and then in audiences, you have to include the uh, organizations that it, uh, that you wanted to recognize. So here you have Aaron Cal, um, and we'll use that. So next we'll create a role, the OIDC integration uses. So we'll hit create role. We're gonna select web identity. Then we're gonna go and pick the provider here that I showed earlier, the api.plumy.com slash OIDC provider. And then the audience is the organization I'm going to do a deployment into, which is uh, Aaron Cal. Um, we're going to select a policy. I'm just going to use a um, general administrator access policy here. Hit next. Uh, we'll call this Cal OIDC. And okay, that all makes sense. So we're going to hit create role. Okay, the role is created. We'll hit view role. And here we'll have this ARN, this ARN. So we're going to copy it here and go back to our Plumy deploy settings. So this is where you paste the role ARN. Um, give it a session name, uh, duration, so zero hours. We'll set it for 30 minutes and zero seconds. And we're going to hit save deployment. We also need to add in the a environment variable setting our AWS region. So we'll do that real quick. Uh, 
and now we can kick off a uh, deployment. And we're going to let that run. Okay, the deployment is complete here. Um, and you, you can see here it uses uh, OIDC to uh, fetch uh, credentials to make changes to uh, your AWS account. Um, and then here's the Plumi deployment. And we can take a quick look at uh, the website it provisioned. And yep, that works. Using OIDC gives you temporary credentials and granular access controls for your infrastructure stacks, which are some of the best practices to use when managing infrastructure. I want to quickly call out that in this video, we use the administrator access policy in our IAM role. But in production use cases, we would likely want to create a role with finer grain permissions and lock down to least privilege for only the resources that the stack creates and modifies. This video is based on a blog post by Pat Gavlin. The link is below in the video. Um, if you enjoy this video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe below. And the next part of this Plumi deployment series, I'm going to cover how to use deployments for drift detection and time bound stacks. That's it for today's Modern Infrastructure Wednesday. See y'all next time.